Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is from again eye disorders. This is ocular tumors. We will learn about ocular tumors, its features and its management. Let's get started with the video. Ocular tumors can appear on different parts of the eye like eyelids, conjunctiva, choroid or retina and in the orbit. These tumors can be benign or malignant. Also, early detection and prompt treatment is necessary like any other part of cancer. Types of the tumor of eye are tumors of the orbit, tumors of eyelid, tumors of conjunctiva, tumors of uveal tract and tumors of retina. It can be caused due to genetic reasons due to immunosuppression if there is suppressed immunity, due to ultraviolet rays exposure and due to previous eye tumor history. Let's start from orbital tumors. First kind of orbital tumor can be dermoid cyst. It can be benign in nature. It is usually seen in children. It is a painless mass which is a free from skin, also fat and lobulated. Next can be optic nerve glioma, which is also a benign tumor. Optic nerve glioma can be a result of nerve disorder. Where there is any neurological disorder, then that can result in optic nerve glioma due to a wrong message transmitted towards the brain, brain and from the brain. Next is rhabdomyosarcoma, which is a malignant orbital tumor. It is common malignant tumor of orbit in children. It is present usually at supermedial orbit and also may produce bone destruction, bone near the eye destruction. Diagram for orbital tumor. Tumors of the eyelid is the next. We have three kind of tumors, melanocytic squamous cell carcinoma and sebaceous carcinoma. Melanocytic tumor is benign in nature, whereas squamous cell carcinoma and sebaceous carcinoma are malignant in nature. Melanocytic tumor can be present at birth. It is present with hair. Melanocytic tumor is due to nevocyte migration and it results in separation of leads. Squamous cell carcinoma is because of ulceration, bleeding, bleeding and crusting. The characteristics can be, it arises in prickle layer. It can be caused due to UV rays exposure or immunosuppression. This immunosuppression can be due to drug or due to some disease. The nodular flake-like lesion become gray-white due to keratinization in squamous cell carcinoma. Whereas in sebaceous carcinoma, it arises from sebaceous gland. There is a presence of nodule on eyelid. And also there is loss of eyelashes. And there is yellowish discoloration. This can be a diagram. When there is a tumor in the eyelid, eye looks somehow like this. It can be seen in actually any age group. Next is tumors of conjunctiva. There can be again three kinds of tumor in conjunctiva, papilloma, squamous cell carcinoma and Kaposi's sarcoma. Papilloma is benign in nature whereas squamous cell carcinoma is malignant and also Kaposi's sarcoma is malignant in nature. Papilloma is present in childhood or early adulthood. If it is present in childhood and early adulthood, it is fed nucleated. And if it is present in middle adulthood, it is called as sessile. It can be unilateral or multilateral. It can be a smooth and soft mass. Next is squamous cell carcinoma. It is present in late adulthood. Unlike other tumors, it is present in late adulthood. 
it is slow growing but it spreads extensively that means slow growing in the beginning but extends in its own constant speed kaposi's sarcoma is seen in patient who is a sufferer of hiv infection it is a slow growing tumor and it is sensitive to chemotherapy if there is tumor in conjunctiva conjunctiva might look somehow like this next is tumor of uveal tract there are two kinds of tumor in uveal tract ciliary body melanoma and choroidal melanoma nature of tumor both can be malignant ciliary body melanoma is visualized when pupil is dilated because of the dilation of pupil the space becomes wider and ciliary body melanoma can be visualized from outside presentation depends on size and location it extends to posterior chamber about choroidal melanoma it is most common during sixth decade of life that means 60s there is a raised pigmented oval shaped mass it is commonly asymptomatic but when it develops gradually then starts to develop symptoms we can perform ocular ultrasound or can be mri can be done to find out the cause this can be a diagram as there was a data it is visualized only when a pupil is dilated so tumor of uveal tract is visualized only when the pupil is dilated tumor of retina finally one kind of tumor can be found a retinoblastoma which is a malignant tumor this is a tumor of photoreceptor cells of the eye average age of diagnosis can be 18 months if it is in children children are present with leukocoria squint squint is looking at multiple direction seems like looking at multiple direction this tumor spreads transsclerally to orbit by optic nerve and to brain and by blood to bone marrow that means it spreads everywhere once it is mixed with the blood this is a diagram can be seen in childhood also can be developed in adulthood tumor of retina we can diagnose tumor of retina through history taking eye examination through slit lamp usg of eye and mri of the orbit surgical management can be enucleation which is muscle detached from the sclera cyclotron imaging the position of tumor photocoagulation use of light for treatment thermotherapy use of heat for treatment of tumor extenteration removing the entire globe of eye medical management can be chemotherapy to manage the disease medically selection of chemo drug should be done carefully if the patient is already immunocompromised chemotherapy of eye tumor includes mitomycin specifically mitomycin fluorouracil methotrexate and cytarabine nursing management first priority of nursing management is pain management that is to provide comfort to the patient patient should be provided with normal room light because indoor normal light can help with correction of vision use of eye protection at work should be done to avoid exposure to avoid unnecessary exposure actually to chemicals to dust fumes next is treatment of underlying disease to destroy the cause of the disease pre and post operative nursing should be provided if there is surgical management that is for the hemodynamic stability of the patient patient should be positioned correctly for effective blood circulation eye straining should be avoided that means prolonged screen exposure prolonged focusing at something using artificial bright light for eye exposure all that things should be avoided to protect our vital muscle patient should be protected from heat sensitivity during heat therapy because exposure to excess heat can be harmful for the eye thank you so much next topic will be discussed in next video